right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the American Dota League. It is the last game of the night. It is Inside Esports versus Arte Gaming, the Peruvian powerhouse, as we do see them show up. Of course, they cannot play too late tonight, uh, as the next game would probably start roughly around, I'd say, 11 o'clock right now, and that would be up against Typical Mistake. So that game is going to be postponed until tomorrow evening, so we'll have another game tomorrow night. Uh, to cap things off, it'll be about at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. My name is Malt. With me tonight is none other than an NY John. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, and I was really impressed by painting gaming last um, game against Insight. Uh, hopefully, Insight can find some sort of rhythm here against Arctic, because Arctic have definitely looked one of the better South American sides we've seen in a long time. Yeah, I mean, uh, Arctic is is honestly they are the and uh, I believe someone from EG, I think it was Pete Beatis, was talking about how Arctic's probably the most consistent team uh, out of all the American teams. And uh, they just play consistently. They play at a consistent level. I think Arctic has a bright future uh, with them. I mean, this team that they've got right now, these five players alone are very, very, very strong. Uh, I've mentioned a lot of the time recently in other casts, uh, Iwo, the Black of the South, uh, just just farms so well, is uh, really great at his position, and we'll see what hero he picks up, but we're going to jump into the picks and the bans, the Life Stealer, the Bat Rider, the uh, Io, as well as the Tree Protector getting banned out here, and Arctic's going to go ahead and pick up the Nature's Prophet, and this is one of the heroes that I think I've seen the most out of any hero recently. And it's a good hero, though. It's a good pickup for Arctic. Yeah, and it's a hero that Arctic use effectively as well. Usually Mihawk on him. And for those of you viewers that tuned in last night, we got to see a real treat from Arctic. They were behind against Smeagol, and they came back with a Divine Rapier on Ewo's Gyrocopter. Uh, actually, Smeagol's own medicine against him, as you casted a game where Smeagol did just that mm -hmm. to Pain, I believe. So uh, really classic game. Mihawk was the superstar of that game, in my opinion. He was playing a clockwork, and it was phenomenal. But Smash, who I think is one of the real emerging stars on the side, had an underwhelming game, so I look for him to rebound today in a big way. He's such a dynamic mid player, he can really turn things upside down in his favor. Absolutely. Inside, they're going to pick up two strong heroes with the Lone Druid and the Darkseer. Smash, just a great mid player all around. We'll see if he can get back into his form in just a moment. Uh, but we do have another pick, and then uh, two more bands as well for both teams. Arctic using a bit of reserve time right now. Of course, there is no Nakes, so you can't do that teleporting uh, Nakes kind of trick. But they could pick up a support here. They already have that Nature's Prophet, which is really what they want. They can maybe even pick up a Clockwork here, but I don't see that happening. I don't think there's a whole lot of room for that. So, But, uh, you know, they, they have a whole lot of options available to them. Arctic, they like to play their own game. They like to play with heroes that aren't necessarily, you know... 100% standard heroes, they don't really like to conform to the meta, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. But, on top of that, they will pick something soon, hopefully, <laughs> as they are talking about what they want to pick up here in just a moment. So, But with the Nature's Prophet already picked up, I guess you, you'd probably expect to support here, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think the best possible choice is the Visage. Um, it's a very aggressive laning hero. It works well because Nature's Prophet is usually going to put a lot of pressure on the tri-lane, whoever is a part of it, and having a hero with that kind of damage output is great, but they go for the Chen instead, so Chen usually going to be an indication that they're going a safe tri-lane, unless you want to play really adventurous and risky, but uh, this could be an opening for Insight to try and create some kind of aggressive tri-lane here and take advantage of that, but it's difficult. We've seen Aki's Chen... Uh, makes that try and look like a three and a half man try line instead of a real two and a half when Chen's vested in getting CS as well. Exactly, and 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 that's the point. I think that they're comfortable with their Chen ganks, and on top of that, with that Nature's Prophet, once he gets a few levels, he'll TP in whenever there's action. So that's just something that the inside definitely has to keep in mind. They might think, you know, okay, we'll be okay in that, you know, down in that dual lane or that tri lane or whatever you want to consider it. But at the same time, I mean, with the Nature's Prophet TPing all over the place, you're really never safe. Uh, when that thing is off cooldown. So, with that being said, we're going to jump into another few bands here, the Gyrocopter as well as the Phantom Lancer for Insight. And then Codal Band coming out from the side of Arctic. They want to make sure they stop that pressure, that push, as you can see. Insight already has uh, a good pushing here with the Lone Druid and Darkseer as well. Kind of combos up with that just a little bit. Darkseer, of course, requiring some sort of space to farm to get some uh, gold, get some uh, items up, including that mech. And on top of that, getting the levels for the wall, uh, wall of Replica. And then the Juggernaut band coming out as well from the side of Arctic. Very smart band there. Dragonite is going to get picked up from inside. This is the meta, I think, uh, well, at least the DK is, mm. that we've seen a lot recently. You send that Dragonite mid, get Elder Dragon form, level 6 and even up to level 11, and then just start pushing as much as possible. So, 
So uh, you're right. Insight has transitioned from 6.77 to 6.78 in the last game or so. Uh, they're now picking up the DK. This is a much more aggressive lineup. They're going to be able to push well. We see the response pick from Arctic is Vengeful Spear, which is interesting. Of course, Venge does have the armor reduction, which is nice to have against DK because he is a tank, mm -hmm. and so is Lone Druid. So it's a nice tool to have, but... This is a reach pick for Avenge at the third slot. Uh, you can get Avenge at five, a uh, hundred percent of the time. Usually, I haven't seen Avenge betting a really long time, so I'm not sure what Arctic really have in mind here, securing this as early as they are. But I definitely am curious to see what they're going to build upon this. They've got something up their sleeve. I feel like they almost have to here. But then the less strike comes out from Insight, and now you know they have one goal in mind, and that that is quick pushing. They do have the Lone Druid in case things go a little bit late. I mean, the Lone Druid will be okay. Phantom Assassin for Arctic, and man, Ewo can play that Phantom Assassin pretty effectively. Uh, the Dragonite as well for Insight will help out in the later stages of the game. But Leshrac, I think, is going to be the story for Insight here. Can they get that pushing going early on? If they want to do that, they have to skill Edict up on that Leshrac. In the meantime, I mean, there's not a whole lot of counter push here. I mean, you've got the Nature's Prophet's Treance who's going to just try to, you know, aggro the creeps and things of that nature. But really, it's up to Insight when they want to push, when their timing is going to come. With the Phantom Assassin, you're going to have to require a lot of farm. Get that PKB up at least before you start trying to fight and then go to town on some heroes. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's, uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, Arctic is, uh, both drafts kind of strange, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, like, this is an interesting, like, Vengeful Spirit and Phantom Assassin. Don't really expect that. I can't really think of why they would put those two together. Wow. The blank, so, but then a Shadow Demon on top of it for Insight, so that's going to be their last support. I don't know how he got through, but he did, apparently. <laughs> Pick SD. That is the best value we've seen in a while. That is phenomenal. And you're right. These lineups are a little bit odd, but it's straightforward for Insight at the very least. They want to go all-in pushy. They're up against the Nature's Prophet and Chen, though, so it's not going to be that easy. Uh, I mean, if they overcommit resources, Nature's Prophet can get some trades out of this. And, of course, Chen getting the heal, and he'll be able to get some farm in the jungle. If he can pull ahead in experience, and he has that hand of God, their team can look pretty solid. But here comes an Alchemist pick what? that changes everything, what? and now the Minus Armor is through the roof. I don't understand... Is he going mid? What is what is the lining? What is the laning situation here? I am I'm a little confused for and and honestly I think that's what Arctic wants us to feel right now. I'm just like I'm scratching my head. Uh, Spiegel did this to me last night actually. They threw an alchemist where it shouldn't have been, and I really couldn't figure out where he was going to go. But it looks like based on the picks, it's going to be a farming alchemist somewhere. And knowing Dragonite is middle, and you can definitely work with that. So alchemist might get his CS middle. Yeah, that certainly could be an option. We are going to jump into the game in just a moment, guys. Make sure you go ahead and purchase that American Dota League ticket. It is so worth it. Definitely check that out. You can watch everybody's perspective in-game. Of course, Dota TV is so great in that regard. Definitely pick that up. We're just waiting on one more hero to be picked up here. There we go. We are going to jump into the game. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I am Mott. Joining me is going to be NY John. So, joining, uh, jumping into the game real quick, uh, on the side of Insight, we've got Plock on the Leshrac. SS will be on the Lone Druid. We're going to see Moon Madness on that Darkseer. We're going to see Demic up on the Dragonite and Deeks on the Shadow Demon. And for Arctic on the Radiant side, we see Smash will be taking Alchemist. Ewo on Phantom Assassin. Misuko on Chen. Misko on Ventral Spirit. And that leaves Mihawk playing Nature's Prophet, a hero he plays very frequently. And he has a glowy staff as well. Yeah, that's a very nice glowy staff, by the way. Let's see what that is. A glowy staff. Uh... Sonorian Sphere Staff is actually a common. That's a common, really? It's a nice common there. But uh, enough about cosmetic items for the time being. I mean, it's almost distracting. It is. It is a little distracting. It's like, don't go into the light. Don't go into the light. I'm yeah, like one of those bugs. You'd think that like bug heroes like Weaver would just be beaten by it. Yeah, well, no bug heroes here, I believe. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we're bug free. Yep, looks like it. But. I'm not exactly sure what they want to lane this like. Looks like Mihawk's going to go top and Alchemist is going to go mid. So, because Smash is the mid player there. And you called that exactly as it was. I mean, that, really that's the only place they're going to send them. You need to get that solo safe lane farm. Well, not solo, but safe lane farm going for Ewo. And uh, Ewo plays an amazing Phantom Assassin. The last time I saw Ewo play a Phantom Assassin, it was with a Wisp. So that is a little bit different. He did get some regen pooled. Uh, six Tango's going for Misko and he has that poor man shield as well. So he'll be able to survive a lot of damage. But it looks like Insight just want to abandon that lane altogether which is surprising to me 
And I don't know what they're going to do with these, lane, uh, these lanes then. I mean, they've got uh, a tri lane, I guess, with SS, and then we're going to see Moon Madness there in the jungle, and they're just trying to, of course, kill this tree and they will do so. But Moon Madness is going to start in the jungle. Dragonite's going to be mid. But the thing I don't like about this is the fact that they're tri laning with a lone druid, which, yes, you're going to secure your farm, but where are the levels going to come from? So uh, Mihawk will have a tough time, and he'll probably actually just abandon this lane as well eventually. Uh, it looks like he's actually heading back to the jungle, as you can see right now. In the mid lane, four last hits going for Smash already. Three for Demic. Demic taking a lot of damage. I think that is from the uh, Acid Spray early on. So this this matchup could be very interesting if Smash can get an early kill here. But we'll have to see. He's got Unstable Concoction too, so he's just going to play as aggressively as possible. But free farm for this Phantom Assassin. That is not what you want to give Ewo, who can get farm amazingly. Uh, just absolutely just out farm pretty much everybody. And we've seen it before, so... Yeah, and my concern is that if they're not going to all-in push top, which uh, may be an idea for them, of course, throwing up that Iron Shell onto the bear and putting behind the tower allows you to push pretty quickly. If they're not going to do that, then they should throw a support middle because they need to gain some favor in this lane. Dragonite can get last hits with Brief Fire, but Alchemist is a little bit more of a bully since we see that Acid Spray getting leveled up early here. It makes it difficult for Dragonite to stand in the lane, and as well as the fact that Unstable Concoction outputs a good amount of damage if he decides to keep leveling it. No, but they are actually going to smoke gank right now with Deeks and with Plock. We saw this earlier before. They decided to try to go around and pick off the uh, Aftershock who was playing the Clockwork, but right now Smash is very low. I mean, he's got to he's gotta go down. There's a disruption. Can they hit the stun with Plock? There it goes, and it will hit. And the stun going for Unstable Concoction, not going to save his life. That's first blood, and it's going for Plock. That's exactly what they needed right there. Yeah, and that was very, very easy for Insight because Smash was low. Uh, he just had no idea it was coming, and it's a little bit of a shame because they weren't showing the lane, obviously, so he could have played it a little bit more cautiously, but it was well executed by Insight, so you got to give credit to them. Mm -hmm. And that's a seamless gank because they get in middle, get the kill they need, and now they can go back top. They didn't miss anything. The wave is now at the tower, so they can go back to pulling and resetting this lane a little bit more, getting more experience. Yeah, and, and, and that just that's exactly what they needed to make sure that they at least can test mid, if, if not, you know, win it all together. I mean, it's still tied 13 to 13. Of course, that kill did go for Plock. Down in the bottom lane, IWO, he is going to be here. It looks like they actually sent the uh, Darkseer down into that bottom lane now. Uh, and that's smart. I mean, you do see Darkseer head down to uh, the lane at level 4 or 3 even. He's got two points on Iron Shell. You generally like to see level 2 surge before you send him down there, but he's actually going to go back to the jungle, it looks like, as there is another pull coming, this time from the Vengeful Spirit. Misko getting some nice experience. Chen as well, of course, because they're sharing that jungle there. So, uh, And that allows Ewo to get free farm as well as just free experience on top of that. He's almost got his phase boots. Uh, meanwhile, up at the top lane, you see Plock level 3 and uh, Deeks. He's only level 2 right now, so they are still missing a little bit of experience here. And uh, SS is only sitting at 15 last hits right now, but that Smoke. could change. Yeah, yeah, nah, as you were saying that, I saw on the minimap. So here we go. Misko looking for a stun onto Demic. He's going to run right into it. The Centaur Con. Chain not the best. The Unstable Concoction doesn't matter. Chen's going to pick up the kill, and they cancel that TP as well because they're like, we're not walking into that. So very nice pickup for the Chen there. And uh, so that's exactly, you know, you're going to do it to us. We're going to do it right back to you, says Arctic. And uh, phase boots are, in fact, done for Ewo. So nicely done for the side of Arctic there. And uh, at least SS is, you know, catching up in last hits right now. But Yeah. I mean, last game I said South America copycat Dota. And <laughs> there it is in full swing. Yeah. He's taking a shot at the middle hero. And that's going to be nice to kind of rebalance this lane. Dragonite's level 5, Smash is not level 5, and then Alchemist. He hasn't picked up any levels in Grievous Greed. So he's playing it very safe. Uh, it would be a little bit greedy if he decided to go for the Grievous Greed, of course, you know, which, no pun intended, it just happens. But uh, getting that unstable concoction means that... Oh, top lane dive. Top. Mihawk. Oh, just getting hit with that split earth and the root from the bear. Mihawk, he is not lucky. How unlucky to get that root right afterwards. I don't think he would have survived either way, but nice gank coming out from Plock, but uh, I like your Grievous Greed pun there in the mid lane on that alchemist, but... <laughs> Yeah, and just finishing that thought, if he can get up an early Shadow Blade, having the levels in Unstable Concoction is going to make him deal a lot of damage and kind of fit that prototypical middle hero role that you'd like to see come out. Whereas Dragonite's damage output against towers because of the Corrosive Breath is pretty good. It's lacking against heroes early on, though. Yeah. 
I want to ask you a question before. I mean, I'm just going to make sure there's no action going on right now. I mean, Ewo's chasing down Moon uh, down in the bottom lane. He's going to throw that stifling dagger, but he's going to surge away. But I wanted to ask, I mean, do you see mid lane now being less about, you know, the big magic heroes like Quap or Puck and more about just heroes that can just semi carry essentially with not necessarily magic damage, but more so physical damage than anything like the Alchemist? Or not necessarily the Alchemist, because you really never see him mid, but like something like Demic or. Uh, the Naga Siren. Yeah, I mean, the Dragon Knight is played by Demic, obviously, but I think that's what we're seeing more and more with this new meta coming out from 6.78. Um, I think that is a good observation, but I'm not sure we've seen the end of the aggressive middle laner. I mean, right. the other I'm not day saying, was, I'm not saying yeah, that, but like... It is transitioning a little bit, you're right. But in this game particularly, because of the Dragon Knight pick, you could see... Arctic decided to pick a hero they can throw middle and he doesn't have to have that emphasis on ganking. So mm -hmm. they kind of took advantage of it a little bit. They could have went for something that just outright beats OD, uh, excuse me, beats Dragonite like OD, yeah. and um, had him be a little bit more mobile as a result of that. But they definitely addressed, assessed that as a DK middle and were just like, we're content with trading farm middle. We'll try and make stuff happen elsewhere. So it's a conscious decision. I do like it. It's kind of cool. Uh, and it's definitely a variance from the old Puck versus Quap every single game middle fight that was going on for a couple months. Yeah. I blame that on Team Liquid and Korok and his damn good play on both of those heroes. Arctic smoking up. They want to go mid. And they're actually going to die to this right now. Demic, unstable concoction. Nice stun. That might save him right now. Stun needs to go off. Oh, good disruption coming out from the Shadow Demon. That's going to stun Smash himself. But Deeks, the Centaur Khan, a lot of damage going. Deeks is going to fall first. The TP rotations are coming in. Acid sprays on the ground. There's the magic missile on Demic. Demons is in trouble, but here comes the side of Moon Madness. And of course, Plock with a huge split earth as well. Smash still chasing that long range stun. Demic. And the wave of terror to grab the kill. Double kill for Misko. And the dive ends up paying off. Just barely, though. Oh, boy. Wave of terror kill? That never happens. Right? That ability does no damage. It does 30 damage at level <laughs> 1. That's phenomenal. And that shows you what I was talking about before with this Alchemist build. Having the concoction at level 4 this early on. 360 max damage. And he's, he waited really long to throw that. Oh, Considering yeah. it's nighttime. That could have backfired and maybe given Insight an opportunity to respond, but it was well executed by Smash. He knows what he's doing, and that was perfect. I mean, they really got lucky that they actually got the kill, but we'll call it perfection. Yeah, I'll agree with you. I'll agree with you there. And Ewo, in the meantime, will take the bottom tower. And the top tower, of course, going down to the Syllabare. So Essis will grab that. He's actually at 2,000 gold. Looks like he'll probably be going for that Radiance. Uh, unless he wants to get that little bit of a late Midas. But at this point, I think Radiance is probably uh, his best option. And a lot of squishy heroes on the side of Arctic here. Not a whole lot of magic resistance either. So I think that Radiance might be the best option for that bear. But uh, also could go for something like a Maelstrom. I, I personally, even though Radiance is good against squishy heroes, and Radiance is a good item in general, I, I personally am not a huge fan of the item. But it, it's been proven effective. So, I mean, who am I to say whether it's good or not? Um, I mean, I don't know what you think about Radiance, but that's just my thoughts. It's it's a good item if you can get it at, you know, 16, 17 minutes. If you have to wait 20 minutes to get it, I don't like it nearly as much because it's a flat damage rate. So you, you kind of know what it is. It does allow Spirit Bear to go away from the Lone Druid hero and mm -hmm. pressure lane. So it has good utility in that regard, but... I've always been a big fan of the Maelstrom. Yeah, me uh, too. Because Good of line. the pushing uh, extra ha help it gives you on towers, just maximizing damage from Demolish. So I really do like that pickup. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree about the Maelstrom. I, I personally would rather see Maelstrom into something like a Bash or something like that for the Spirit Bear. But Radiance, if you're going to get it, get it early and uh, split push waves. Make sure you push out the lanes. And I think that's what they're going to try to do here is they're just going to try to choke hold, I think, Arctic right now. But Arctic, they've got a firm, I don't want to say lead here. It's 3,000 experience and almost 2,000 gold. So anything can happen at this point in the game. They need a big fight for Insight to really turn it around. Um, but one big fight could do the job, and, and if they can get a kill on Ewo especially, they'll be in a good position. And in fact, it looked like they wanted to gank Ewo down in the bottom lane, but he's fine. He's at level 8 right now. He should be leading in terms of experience. Yeah, he's tied with the Alchemist. Deeks is going to catch out that Vengeful Spirit. Ewo's going to blink it immediately right now. Split Earth on to 2. Not what they wanted. Misko in some trouble. Magic Missile will clean off Deeks right now, but IWO, he's got to get out of there. 
It's a one for one trade so far, but Mihawk TP'd in right now, looking for, of course, the side of Plock. He's gonna try to TP out, and he's got no way to stun him right now. There's going to be the Sprout going on Moon as right as he uses that Surge. And there's gonna be that Hand of God right now, the slow, the stifling dagger. Can he get there? And the kill going to Mihawk as well. So two for one trade in the end, Misko getting caught out a little bit, but like I talked about before, like we talked about, Mihawk can be pretty much anywhere with that TP, and it's only level one, it doesn't matter. He still can be all over the map, and now they're gonna roam right onto mid. Unstable Concoction getting charged, they wanna go right on top of this DK. There's the Magic Missile to start it off, and then the Unstable Concoction, beautiful chain, and now Demic, he is gonna go down. Smash will pick up that kill, he's got 2,000 gold in the bank. And now, Arctic, they're starting to find their rhythm here, and they're gonna try to maybe go for a tier one tower mid as well. Yeah, and this is phenomenal play from Smash as well. While you were watching the action down bottom, they actually got a kill on Lone Druid. So uh, oh, wow. uh, it was the Chen plus the Alchemist. And this is before Alchemist has his aggressive item. I think the Courier is going to bring out a Plate Mail to him and a Chain Mail. So he's going for an AC build, mm -hmm. which we saw middle lane. That's a big armor target on the DK. He already has two levels in Dragon Blood. So he's sitting on 12 armor. They take away eight right off the bat. And with an AC, it's going to be even more devastating for DK. And DK is the highest armor, of course. Uh, Lone Druid actually tying him right now. But once he gets those levels in the Dragon's Blood, he'll surpass him easily. And if you're able to take down DK that quickly, your whole team is in trouble. Oh, I like this smoke. I love this smoke coming out from Arctic and Moon Madness. That charge is going for Smash. Moon doesn't even see this. They don't even see Moon, but they're going to go on the low ground, and, and that charge is actually going to stun him. So Smash making a little bit of a misplay there. Moon is going to walk entirely into this team. Oh, gosh. Oh, Moon. The magic missile. No. Yes, the swap first. It doesn't matter. Moon's dead. Now they start the unstable concoction. Here they come. They're going to find on the uh, high ground there, and Plox going to get hit up with that unstable concoction. That's a lot of damage. Nice disruption defensively. That's not going to save his life, however. Demon coming through with that breathe fire. Will pick up a kill on the Chen, by the way. Now a buyback coming in. That was from Misko, as you can see. Chen's still down. Misko, no, no, Misko got a double kill. Excuse me, block by back, and now there's a double kill for Demic. By the way, Smash gonna get rooted, gonna throw that on Civil Concoction. Smash, he's got that chemical rage. He needs to pop it. Demic taking a lot of damage. Chen's gonna get the cre kill with his creeps. By the way, Mihawk getting cutted around. That Maelstrom is up on that bear. By the way, they're still chasing after Mihawk here right now. Mihawk trying to get back to that tier one tower. Now they're gonna keep fighting. It looks like charge for that unstable Concoction. Who's gonna use it on Deeks? Oh, just obliterates him there, and. uh... An interesting trade. A few people bought back. Now SS looking to go back in right now. He's got to be careful. I mean, there's two heroes here. Lester Rack can't really contribute a whole lot. Chemical Rage is done. Only for 20 seconds. And that's going to be the end of the fight. I misspoke. I thought it was the Chen buying back. But, or, excuse me, Misko buying back. But he actually got a double kill. So my apologies. As he will pick up, it looks like a smoke of deceit. Yes. So that's the end of the fight. And, uh, well, we talked about that Maelstrom. And SS has it. So. Yeah. And we're seeing... Smash just take over the game once again. I always love to watch him play. I really think he's going to be a prominent player for quite some time. But this Alchemist pick, they knew he could stand strong middle against the Dragonite, but Insight had no idea that Alchemist could be as productive as he is without even having a real core item up yet. He hasn't lost the tier 1 tower middle against the DK, but he's been a part of 8 kills, so it's not like he's been sitting middle farming the whole game. He's been so proactive, and that's really a big loss if you're fielding a DK. You want, once that mid laner leaves that lane, you want to get that tower kill. You want mm -hmm. the Corrosive Breath Dragon form to just wither it away. And that gives you a good gold lead on your team. Right now, they only have one tower down with a team that features Leshrac, DK, Lone Druid. I, I mean, their job is to push, and they just can't do it because Arctic has been all over the map. I, we see Chen top lane to bottom lane, jungle to jungle, everywhere. Yeah, and I think they might have missed their opportunity. They realized they need to push. They're going to go ahead and push this mid-tier one. Uh, a fortification might come out, and they might try to defend this. Smash is actually walking on through. That stun's going to go. Illusion Rune going for the side of Smash. Nice disruption coming in. Here comes the Centaur Khan army. Tower will go down. Lone Druid's going to grab that. And he swaps coming through. Misoku taking uh, Maelstrom damage. And so they'll, they'll take that tower and uh, waste the fortification as well. But now Plock, oh, Plock, he's in some trouble. That one hit's going to do the job from Smash. Who's dominating, by the way? Demic. He's getting a little close. I thought he might have been, uh, of course, swapped there. Meanwhile, Phantom Assassin. Misoku, what are you doing there? Misoku and Mihawk, they're on the other side of the river. Stun going on to Demic there. Nice sprout. Meanwhile, Smash going to grab a kill on Moon. 
course, going down in that dark sea right now, looking for a stun, but the Treants are blocking the way, so the Centaur Khan can't get there. Smash has all finished the job. He's got three seconds before he can get that. Disruption's gonna go. Magic missile long range on Deeks. Deeks is gonna fall, maybe. Test of Fate the stun. They need to get it. No, they will not get that Dragon Knight. He is gonna barely survive, but IWO coming in. He's ready to fight now. Picks off, of course, Deeks. Here he is. He's got the helm. He's got, of course, the phase boots, and he's got to have something else flying out to him right now. He's got a lot of money. I mean, he had a lot of money saved up before that. The courier is actually on the way, I believe, with a basher. So Ewo is going to pick up a basher. Assault Kiros is going to be done for Smash, and it's looking good for Arctic. Yeah, that might be the understatement of the day. It's looking good. It's looking uh, amazing for Arctic. Mm -hmm. And they're already 10,000 gold lead, 10,000 experience lead. It's 15 minutes into the game, and they're up against a team that wants to win early. Uh, I mean, they transition late better as well. They have Phantom Assassin and Alchemist to fall back on. Meanwhile, Insight have really only Lone Druid, I don't think Dragonite is that good of a late game carry. He does have um, a nice abilities with that Frost Dragon form, but it's not really going to be the damage you need to succeed against these heroes later yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, that's definitely going to be a factor if they make it that far, and I don't think they will because the minus armor that is coming out from here is going to make Ewo hit so ridiculously hard that uh, the supports are going to want to leave the wells. I mean, if he gets a coup de gras with the acid spray plus the Wave of Terror and the AC up, uh, that could one-shot Leshrac at 625 or Shadow Demon at 606. And on top of that, I, I haven't even thought about Blur. I mean, it's incredibly hard to hit Ewo. And meanwhile, he's going right on top of SS. He's going to be the one to initiate. He's going to get stunned as well. Looks like they're looking for a stun. Deeks is going to get up by Magic Missile and the Unstable Concoction just for overkill there. Moon, he's trying to get out. That Surge still only level 2. Nice swap long range for Misko. Double kill for Smash. And uh, now they've got some room to push in. They do have that Aegis up on Ewo. He's only at half health right now, but I'm sure he's not concerned. Uh, they will, of course, have that mech or something along those lines. But Masoka's up top. Don't even need him at this point. They're just going straight for this Tier 3. No fortification available. This DK cannot do anything. Still in poison form. Not a level 11 just yet. There's the stun. EWO. Oh, big blink. Big crit coming out, I think. Was that even the crit? I think he just went down. DK will buy back. And uh, Ewo... Now disruption on Misko right now. They want to continue to chase. There's all five here. Maybe thinking about backing off. Nice route on to Misko. And Misko looks like he will fall there. But he's going to get that magic missile on Demic before he dies. IWO with a double kill as he goes right in on the base right now. I missed it completely. And he grabs a triple kill. Ultra oh. kill for IWO going absolutely ham. Moon, he might be the rampage. Will he? Will he? Yes, the rampage for IWO. Picking it up on the Phantom Assassin. Can he get a double rampage is the question. SS, he's in some trouble. This stifling dagger. Is there enough damage? IWO, will he? get it yes the double rampage for iwo they'll pick up the kills they'll pick up the tower they'll pick up this game ladies and gentlemen it's 22 to 6 and arctic they're just absolutely outstanding gg is called ladies and gentlemen oh and what can you say about ewo <laughs> you know things are going your way when the last auto attack to try and get that double rampage is a coup de gras proc and <laughs> just hitting him for 600 damage right there was amazing and this is Arctic. They are going to beat a lot of teams that look a little bit uneasy in games. They're going to take advantage of that. And Insight, early on, it looked like they didn't know exactly what they were doing, whether they wanted to push out that lane straight off the bat top. Uh, it was a tri lane with a lone druid, something we don't see often. You pointed that out. Last time we saw that work was probably last summer with Complexity running it in a totally different game because of the patches that have happened since then. Mm -hmm. So Insight looked scattered and Arctic did not. They looked on point. Uh, they looked too normal form for them and tremendous win. Yeah, I gotta say, absolutely. I mean, 7-0 and 3 for the Phantom Assassin in an 18-minute game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's going to be it for us tonight. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to the ADL, the ADL admins, as well as all of you guys in chat sticking around because, of course, the update did take longer than expected. That being said, if you enjoyed our casting, you could follow us. My name is Mott. You can follow me at twitter.com slash mottdota2, spelled mottdota2. And you can follow NYJohn at NYJohnTV on Twitter as well, as Twitch is the same, I believe, for your, uh, your Twitch channel. And uh, any shout outs before we head out of here, John? Um, shout out to ADL for being awesome, and mm -hmm. shout out to Smash for being outrageously good at Dota. Yes. And yes. shout out to Mott for having me on. So. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, 
A uh, few shout-outs for myself. I want to make a shout-out to the ADL. Make sure you purchase up those tickets. We've got a lot of action, not only tomorrow, but Saturday. We've got a lot of big names uh, playing a lot of big games of Dota here. So uh, check out the ADL. Follow them on Twitter, twitter.com slash American Dota, and twitch.tv slash American Dota League if you are, in fact, a uh, in-game viewer, which we really appreciate you buying the tickets. So with that being said, guys, we're out of here for tonight. Really appreciate you guys joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. I think roughly at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, hopefully. Um, I'll let you guys know, but thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, have a good night, everybody.